Hey, painters, we are live. Welcome from Colorado. We are live. Welcome. And we're going to be here live every Friday morning, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And we're going to be doing uh, plein air still life painting on the patio. If the weather's bad, we're going to go in the studio, practice our still life and other stuff in there. And uh, we're going to have a live Q&A at the end of every one of these 30-minute shows just to all to help you start plein air painting um, and learn to, to become a better plein air painter. So welcome. And uh, this is our still life setup for today. I showed you the, the finished painting. I did this painting last week because I'm not going to I'm not going to be able to finish the whole painting here today. But I wanted you to see what we're painting. I just made the still life setup simple um, because we're going to talk about uh, why, how that can help you with your plain air painting. So, um, you know, if you're watching on the replay, feel free to skip through and fast forward and find the content that helps you the most and watch some other videos of us uh, painting up in the mountains of, of Colorado. And uh, if we're just meeting, my name is Terry. Uh, welcome again. I'm with Plain Air, learning Plain Air. And, uh, you know, my passion is Plain Air painting and enjoying God's beauty outside in the mountains and uh, trying to help you start Plain Air painting or become a better Plain Air painter. All right, if you're in the chat and, uh, you know, go ahead and throw your name in and let us know where you're watching from and why you love Plain Air painting. I know I love it. As I just said, I just love to be outdoors. I love the mountains. I love God's beauty. And uh, I love to be creative and paint what could be a better combination than that, right? And so um, we're live. It's sunny. If you hit that live link and it didn't work, I apologize. This is our first live show ever. So there's going to be lots of lots of fumbles, but I'm just here for you. I just wanted to make myself available, have some fun, uh, do a little painting, answer some questions, have a little coffee. And so why don't we get going? Let's just start painting. All I want to say, too, this live stream is brought to you by uh, my free private unlisted video, complete guide to planner setup and supplies. So if you haven't downloaded that yet, it's a free private unlisted YouTube video that'll help you with everything you need to get set up with uh, planner painting. All right, so let's do this. So, so why still life? I've got my wash on here. Um, and so let's get going here. But, you know, I was trained in Russian impressionism and the Russian impressionists always said that if you can paint a still life, you can paint anything. And there's a reason for that, and that is that still life, or sorry, plein air painting outside, plein air landscape painting is really all about, it's all about comparing shapes and pieces and colors. And if you watch my videos, you know that I, I preach that every time. And so what better way, you know, to, to practice that than something that's, that's still, you know, still life. And this is a great first step, you know, right here because on the patio, because it's kind of safe, you know, you're not, you don't have this big complex, you know, landscape that's overwhelming. And uh, you can just kind of get some some plein air practice in with the light changing and get that practice in, um, you know, and and not not have to be overwhelmed by the complexity of things. You can just make a simple plein air setup like this. Now in the studio, it's the best practice because obviously, you know, the weather doesn't change, the, the, the you know, the, uh, the sun doesn't disappear. And uh, everything is, is fixed and set with the lighting and then the atmosphere so that you can just focus on your fundamentals and your skills. So that's why we're doing this, man. When I, when I was first did an apprenticeship in Russian Impressionism, um, I, I was forced by my mentor to do, a lot of, to do a lot of still lives. And it was great practice. And I, I didn't really realize at the time, you know, just how much it would help me. And... So I got, I got away from it, really, truthfully, I got away from it, and I want to get back to it. And since you're just starting, I think it's really going to help you. So I hope you guys are having a good week and uh, having a good weekend. Uh, I'm just doing the drawing here. So if you've watched my other videos, I do the four P's of the drawing stage. Pieces, placement, proportion, and perspective. So now I'm just kind of loosely finding my pieces in the drawing, as you can see. Um, this is all changeable, you know, if I don't like it. You know, I can start over. I can scratch it out with some turpentine and rub it off. Um, and so really, I'm just trying to find my my light, my shadow, my cast shadow. I'm trying to really just get my proportions correct, the size of the apple compared to the planter, the, the, uh, the pot, the holder, the flower holder, if you will. And so I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of, Big shapes, you know, I'm just really kind of just playing around and just kind of seeing with the design, you know, where it's going to sit, what I like, how it's going to fit. I don't really love that this is right in the center of my painting, but uh, it is what it is. We're, we're really just here to just focus on getting the right color value and temperature in the right place and focus on our fundamentals. And so I'm not looking to get a masterpiece. If I do, great. 
But uh, so right now, when the sun is out, you know, you've got you've got your light, you got your light on the object, your shadow on the object, and the cast shadow. So that's what I'm just really trying to find right now. The sun is behind my painting, so it's forming these beautiful violet, you know, cast shadows on the tablecloth in front of me. So I really just want to find that. And you can do that through what's called a method called cross hatching, where you just kind of go like that with your shadow. And on the apple, this side of the apple is all in shadow. So I just want to show that. I want to show that and make it make it accurate, you know. So I just keep this loosey goosey. I don't try to get too technical, but these are geometric shapes, you know. So I want to show, I want to make, I want to make these three-dimensional, and that's why I draw this as a three-dimensional shape like that. So um, again, if you're just joining us, welcome. And I'm Terry with Learning Plain Air, and we're doing a live here. We're on Q and A. Sorry, at the end of this painting. Sorry, I got to get my coffee in here, and uh, we're just going to try to help you become a better plain air painter. I say we get some color on. What do you say? I always start with my darkest dark. That's where I start. And uh, if you look at it today, it's it's that that beautiful planter pot that my wife has and provided for us. She so graciously got all the flowers to stay alive for me and everything like that. So <laughs> I'm very appreciative of that. But I'm just mixing up a mixture here of some alizarin crimson and some ultramarine blue just to, to show my darkest dark. So early on, with a lot, of, a lot of turpentine or a lot of medium, whatever you're gonna use, you know, I'm just gonna get that in. Underneath this holder is definitely gonna be a darkest dark. I just wanna kinda of put that color in just briefly, you know? I don't need to, I don't need to get too fancy about it, really. And then let's just get the apple color, just a just a hint of that apple color in early as well. I'm going to go with lizard crimson, a little cad red, and a little cerulean blue because it's kind of a dark purplish, you know, reddish color. And I'm just going to put that shadow color in just like that, just very briefly. Just a hint of it and just stay in the shape right there. Okay. So there we go. That's kind of the darkest darks set right there. And that helps me key the painting for all other colors in the painting. That way I can judge better when I go forward. So let's go forward, man. Let's get some nice color into this thing. Get the flowers going. And we'll do that. So another darkest dark is going to be the green right in here, you know, of the of the flowers right there. Um, right at the base of the flowers, that soil and the flowers themselves. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix up uh, using a green. I'm going to go ultramarine blue. I'm going to go cad yellow. And it's a pretty dark, dark green that's in there in shadow. I'm going to go with some cerulean blue. And I just like to mix with my palette knife when I can. But I'm in a hurry today, so I'm going to try to go really quickly. I'm just going to be mixing fast and furious. But I'm using a big number 12 brush, and I'm just... I'm just doing pieces, okay? So I, I see things in terms of pieces. Large, I always paint large to large to small and thin to thick. And so I don't, I'm not painting flowers right now. I'm, I'm painting shapes and colors and pieces. And that's really what I'm doing. A little bit of ultramarine blue right there. Okay, some of those flowers come over the side of the pot there. Like that. There's a little bit of dirt for the dirt. Let's just go alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, just really quickly. A little more alizarin crimson, a little permanent rose. There we go. So I'll try to move a little quicker here for you, but pieces, placement, proportion, perspective. So I want to make sure my proportions are correct. Everything has a boundary. It has a place in the painting, so I place it properly where it's supposed to go with artistic license. We can't really show perspective in this painting, but... Uh, um, those are kind of the four P's and the, the, the shadow, the shadows I put in, which we'll do next. And then I put in my darkest dark, which I already told you about. So let's just get those shadows in really briefly. And I'm going to start, if you look at that wall back there, we have a beautiful, uh, I don't know, Italian, Tuscan, like stucco wall. And, uh, as you can see in the other painting that I did, 
it forms a nice it forms a nice dark in the background to contrast against the flowers you know so when you're plain air painting another thing you want to do is look at how background colors or other colors can affect the color you're trying to pop or work on so that's what i'm gonna do right here really quickly i'm gonna do a little cat orange cerulean blue permanent rose and just get that wall shadow dark color to really set up my flowers to pop you know the sun is out today and it's just a beautiful sunny bluebird color a day and I want my still life you know to reflect that just using a lot of turpenoid as you can see it's going on wet it's going on fast okay there there we go so that that should do it Put hints of cerulean blue in there, hints of cat orange in there as well. Just warm, warm and cool playing side by side. Let's work on these shadows real quick and uh, kind of go there. Again, if you're just joining us, welcome. We're live and uh, we're working on plein air still life. Try to become better plein air painters. And we're going to have a Q&A. So if you're in the chat, we do have some people in the chat, so welcome. And it's hard for me to see. I apologize. The sun is blaring. This is my first live, you guys. You guys got to... Have some patience with me here, man. I'm painting, I'm talking, I'm reading. Welcome, Mariel. Welcome, Dan. Glad to have you with us. Uh, talking to Dan this week. Dan was the guy in that other video. You should watch that video we did up there in uh, Ridgeway. He was the, the beginner planner painter on that last YouTube video. So Dan's with us. Glad you could join us. Thanks so much. We'll keep going here. And uh, if you got questions at the end, put them in the chat here in a few minutes. We'll get to them about 15 minutes. It's going to be about a 30-minute show. So let's just uh, let's get these shadows in. I'm going to go with some cobalt blue. All right. And I'm going to go with a little titanium white. And a little permanent rose just to make a nice violet color. Nice violet color. Always make your shadows colorful if you can. You know, don't, don't use too many earth tones and uh, too many blacks. And then if I want to kind of gray that down a bit, I could just add a little orange to it. You know, see that? So I just kind of do a little tester there, see what it looks like, and I like that. And so let's just run with that. I'm going to dip into my medium here because I want to go quicker. I've got some liquid impasto that I'm using, so I'm going to put that in. It just kind of helps things move a little quicker, you know. And uh, there's that beautiful shadow right there coming from the planter. So we'll have some wind. We'll have some stuff, you know. Some sounds I apologize but again I just wanted to be here for you guys to to just kind of get to know you better to be available and to answer some questions to help you become a better planner painter so I'm not really trying to make a masterpiece here but I do want to kind of talk to you about some skills that we need when we're painting out, painting outside and uh, it's really as I said all about pieces and so I think the biggest thing that, that can help you is in your plein air journey is to, to, to un Train your brain not to uh, paint objects by name. That's where I made my biggest breakthrough in my workshops as a beginner. Um, I kind of wrote, I wrote in my notes, I said, hey, Terry, you've been, you've been painting things by name. Don't do that. Just see it, see it as a shape and a color. And uh, that helped me tremendously in my plein air journey. And with Russian Impressionism, that's really what it's all about, you know. I'm just getting the edge of the tablecloth here. And let's do this, a little titanium white, a little phthalo green, a little cad yellow light, and a little yellow ochre. That tablecloth picks up colors. It's not just a white tablecloth, you know? So there's like, I think like the flowers or something reflects, reflects into it down here, into the tablecloth, reflected light. So you've got... If you watch that tree painting video, mine, you got light, shadow, cast shadow. You got your half tone, your highlight, reflected light. So there's a lot to think about. We're not going to talk about that today, but we're going to talk about that as the weeks go by here with this live show about all the elements of light and shadow that you need to know about. So let's, uh, man, where do we go next here? 
let's get some uh, let's get some flowers in. Let's do that. Um, I see some light hitting the top of that apple, so I'm going to go with a little little cad red, a little cad yellow light, phthalo green, and a little more cad red. And I'm just going to try to pop just the light hitting right there on that apple like that. Whoa, painting down. I'll get it. <laughs> Here we go. It's all right. It's impressionistic painting. If it falls to the ground and gets dirty, no worries. <laughs> all right, so there's kind of our light hitting the top of this apple right there. And uh, let's get some flowers in here, man. Let's go for it. Just a couple flowers here, and then we'll do some more talking. And I'll try to check the chat here while I'm painting. You know, if you got anything, if you guys are saying, I'm saving the questions till the end. Sorry, I'm going to stick my big, ugly face in the screen, but it's, it's bright. And uh, feel free to watch this on the replay. But I appreciate all you guys joining, joining in. We've got Daniel. We've got Eric. Thanks for joining us, Eric. Appreciate you, buddy. Good to see you, hear you. And uh, Bob, all right, man. Thanks for joining in. Glad you guys are here. Hope you guys are having successes with your uh, 916. With your plain air journey. Let's get some flowers in. I'm going to go with these these white flowers. They're real pretty. They're what are they? Petunias? I think they're no, they're not petunias. They're Shanda's here with me. My wife. She doesn't want to be on camera, but she's helping. She's helping hold the laptop and all that kind of stuff. But um, let's go with titanium white, and then. A little bit of cad yellow light and yellow ochre. It's just a pretty, maybe a touch of phthalo green. And like these flowers are not white. They, they're picking up, you know, all this beautiful color that's there. Some of it's in light, some of it's in shadow, you know. We'll sort that out in a minute. But right now, I'm just getting the basic shape in there. All right. Okay, let's just get some more of this foliage in here. I'm just using pure color. And when you put a, a dark next to a light, that's where the magic starts to happen. See, like that shadow and light, light and shadow. Always look for opportunities to pop your colors like that. And when you put light next to shadow, that's what can happen. All right, let's try pure cad red. I'm not doing a whole lot of mixing, man. I'm just going quick. Just to try to get something on the canvas for you guys and just show you. You know, you know, I'm just having fun. <laughs> you know, it's just fun to play with paint. So you don't have to try to make stuff a masterpiece. Just experiment. Have fun. You know, I mean, if you wanted to use a palette knife to, to block some of this in quicker, we could go with like a little permanent rose. Palette's pretty messy here. Kind of going against my rules, but I want to keep things organized normally. Scoop up a big old piece like that, and then boom. Just watch the, the happy accidents happen off your palette knife. And I'm just doing, you know, I'm just doing shapes. That's all I'm doing. I'm not trying to make flowers, but maybe you're, maybe even at this early stage, your eye could be tricked into the fact that, uh, that those are flowers. And we're just getting going. You know, I just call this the abstract stage where I try and I spend about 70% of my painting in this stage. Let's get some of those purple, beautiful flowers, more ultramarine color back here. I don't know why I'm sticking with my palette knife still. I'm go back to my number 12 brush. I got this big old brush from Dick Blick, um, this silver bristleton. It's like, I think it's like an inch. I love this brush. It's awesome. It's just great. And let's just go pure ultramarine blue and a little bit of red for those pretty violet flowers in the back there, right there. And... You can see a bit of a problem that these these violet flowers are blending too much into the background right now so i'm going to need to put some light on those to but that's okay no worries i'm just trying to find my composition still at this point it's not too late to turn around to try some other stuff you know i mean i could do it right now i could take the palette knife and scrape it all off i'm not going to but don't be afraid you know what's really cool is that planter. I love that old rustic planter. Let's just try to put some cool colors in there 
There's a lot of reflected light in there. I see some violets in there. There's some beautiful like rust orange colors like that in there. And, uh, you know, we're using a laptop. I apologize. I hope you can see. But YouTube, the way it works is um, you have to use, unless you have a thousand subscribers, you have to use your laptop for stuff like this. And I'm, I'm almost there, thankfully, but I'm a newer channel on it. And so once you hit a thousand, you can start, you can use your phone and go mobile and do it. And that's how I film all my YouTube videos up in the mountains is using my iPhone. And I would love to use my iPhone right now because it's just more, it's just easier, you know, but uh, my shadow, my shadows need to be a little darker. So maybe you pick that up, but uh, I'm going to go with a little more ultramarine blue and oh, there goes the pain again. And a little red. Just to make that a little darker. And I'm gonna finish a few more strokes up here and then I'm gonna get to your question. So we'll do that because I wanna respect your time. I don't wanna keep you too long. Let me just show you what we could do here on a couple quick things. With the tablecloth, we take some titanium white, a little bit of tad light. And uh, next to the dark planter pot, you start doing some stuff like this, you know? And leave a little bit of the, the bright underwash. You know, leave it there. Thanks, Jen. Okay. And so now we have some contrast again. So one of the things with still life is you have a chance to, to work on your contrast. And as I always say, contrast creates what? Contrast creates interest. You got it. So that's what I love about this big brush. You can kind of co cover some serious real estate pretty quickly. Um, I regret we never got further on my apple, but that's okay. We're just here to have fun and uh, kind of go over a few, a few pointers and a few tips, and we'll get to your questions here. I think we'll do that now because we're kind of, we're kind of running out of time. But those are the things you could do. And then with the flowers, you know, again, these are just pieces, pieces of, of light and shadow. So if I wanted to kind of pop you know, one of those flowers, I would just go titanium white, cad red, maybe a little permanent rose, a little orange, a little orange in there, and then just kind of paint the light. Don't paint the flower, paint the light like that. It's just impressionistic quick strokes like that, okay? So I think I'll stop there. You, you've seen the finished painting. You've seen what it looks like, and we got through a few, a few kind of pointers there. But uh, I think, you know, let me leave you with this. I'm not leaving you, but let me say this, that, that drawing is, is your biggest thing, drawing with a brush, the four Ps. That's why I go over it all the time, because if you can't draw with your brush, you know, your painting just isn't going to, uh, it's just not going to work out because you can't cover that up with a bad drawing with flashy color and, and, and cool brush strokes. And so that's why you have to have good drawing in place. All right. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to get to a few of your questions. I see some chat going on. Sorry. I didn't mean to get in your face again. I'm going to sit down. I had a back spasm. Oh, for the past three weeks, I'm working through it. It's been so sore. Uh, we were up filming up in, uh, up above you, Ray. We were doing a four wheeling video and, uh, I don't know if you guys can see me. Yeah. And it started pouring. I was doing a waterfall video. It started pouring rain. And we had to rush out of there, me and my family, real quickly. And I hurt my back doing it. Uh, would have been a cool video. I got half of it filmed, so we'll see if we, uh, if we get the rest of it filmed there. But I'm trying to get your chat. So, um, you know, go ahead and uh, fire away, man. I don't know everything, but I might know just a little bit more than you. And so I just want to help you. That's all. I, I, I'm still searching. I'm still learning. It's a journey. And that's what's so cool about plain air is – it's never boring and, you, and it's just, I mean, you could mix green like 50 different ways. You could spend a year figuring out how to do that by itself. But uh, all right, Eric, as you were watching, hit the thumbs up. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. And uh, go visit Eric Dingler. Eric, I forget the name of your, uh, your company, but he's helped me with some website stuff and I want to get with him. Um, if you're painting to sell paintings or want to get into selling your paintings one day, I think Eric could be a help to us all. And uh, there's Dan. 
All right. Great job. Thank you, buddy. And uh, appreciate it. Fire some questions away at me. I'm ready and willing and able. Here's a question that, uh, and if I'm missing your questions, I apologize. It is really sunny and this is kind of new to me. Uh, not very good at it, but uh, uh, here's a question. Number one is what size canvas, you know, should I paint on as a beginner planner or painter? And hold on, Eric, I'll get to your question. I see it coming in. You know, here's what I would do. I was trained in Russian Impressionism on big canvases, 20 by 24, 16 by 20. And I just kind of got used to that. But quite frankly, I would go with 9 by 12s, 8 by 10s, little smaller canvases, because I think it's crucial to get through all the stages of a painting over and over and over. Practice. It's miles on the brush, right? So that would be my recommendation for canvas size. And then try to get your painting done in about two to three hours. I mean, you could stay out there for four or five hours if you want, but... All right, Eric, here's your question, buddy. What adjustments would I make in your process of any? I don't want to paint in the Russian Impressionistic style. Right, good question. Um, you know, so that's why even even I, I follow some realistic painters, realism. There's all kinds. There's abstract. I've been, I just did a commission for a customer, and it was like way abstract, more than, than I'm comfortable with. But, you know, Eric, I, I think that if you um, see some value in my process, of the four P's and going through these different stages and painting shapes and colors, and all the things I teach, you can still, you know, you can apply that to realism and any, any style that you want, you know, um, it's really unlearning your brain that you're painting objects. It's really just trying to, to paint pieces and shapes and colors. And, and it takes a long time to practice and dial in your colors, values and temperatures, you know? So is there a safer solvent to use? Hey, I use, um, hold on one sec. Um, I'll get this. I use, thanks for your question, Mary Ellen. I use liquid impasto lately by Windsor and Newton. And it's, um, and let me just get some, it's fairly thick, you know, and it's okay. I like it. It gives that buttery texture. This is safer. I used to use copal, which I think causes cancer. <laughs> Pretty sure it does. At least it smells like it does. Um, it is. Most of them are toxic. So, Terpenoid, odorless terpenoid, you know, I use a lot of that. But try this, and there's another product. I'll get it for you um, afterwards in the chat or the comments, or uh, I'll get in touch with you. There, I've tried one other one that is um, that is safe as well, but this, this is safe, and it works pretty well. Quite frankly, I like the liquidy stuff, the, the gal kits and the, uh, the oils and stuff, and the copal. I love this, like a syrup. It's like painting with a, with a syrup. But uh, try this. Let me show, let me know what you think. It's Windsor and Newton liquid impasto, fourteen bucks, two hundred milliliter tube. I get it at Dick Blick. You click on the links below. I'll leave them. I have an affiliate relationship, as you know, with Dick Blick, and uh, and no extra cost to you. You can order your stuff through there, and I get like you know a few bucks here and there <laughs> to help me uh, pay for things. But let's see what are the questions you got. Fire them at me. I'm here. Let's see if I missed it. I'm sorry. Just type it in there again. I appreciate you guys joining me. Thanks again. And uh, well, I got paint all over me. <laughs> Sorry. Here's another common question that we get, okay, all the time. And it's um, it's what's most important to work on as a beginner planner or painter? You know, because you, you could talk about perspective. You could talk about values and color mixing and composition. And they're all important. But here's my top three. Ready? It would be in this order. It would be drawing, values, and color mixing. And I hate to put color mixing third because because I'm an impressionist, a colorist. But um, but really, like I said, if you're drawing and your values are off, and you got to have three to five, you know, values in a painting, I call them structural values or foundational values, and you got to be thinking like that right from the beginning. And if you don't, you're going to get yourself in trouble later in the painting. So that's why I say drawing, and that's why I say values, and then color, and that's why I say paint on nine by twelves, eight by tens. And, uh, and get yourself used to going through and, and doing a full painting, getting done, and bam, bam. And I think that's the best way to go right there. So, so yeah, Bob says use, use water. What I use, I use, you know, odorless terpenoid in my early stages. And you guys probably use this too. And I just put it right here. And uh, that's what I use early on to get going. In fact, I used a little bit of that liquid impasto in this painting, but, but this is what I use, odorless terpenoid early on. In the painting process, and uh, but Millie really doesn't care. Look at her; she's yeah, been over there all there. morning. See Millie, <laughs> she's, Millie. She's, uh, wondering why we're not in the mountains this morning. Quite frankly, are you in the wrong spot, baby? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Sorry. All right. So what else do we got? Dan saying hi, Shanda. Yeah, I just I had to have Shanda help me with this first YouTube live. It's just too too complicated, man. <laughs> I'm a painter, not a techie guy. Eric, help me. <laughs> it's 9:30. All right. Well, let's see if there's any other questions. If not, we will wrap up there. And uh, here's let's take this one more from Bob. I'm having difficulty getting the uh, Russian impression style going. Suggestions or tips on starting with this style? Yeah, I mean, um, I studied under Don Solly. He studied under Sergey Bongart, um, Zach or Fedorov. I mean, study some of those those Russian impressions. Just Google it and look them up and see. And I know what you're saying. It's hard, you know, because when you first start playing or painting, you you want to draw the apple. You, you our brain just automatically thinks I want to put a shape to it. I want to define it. I want to get all the characteristics, you know, but Russian impressionism isn't about that. It's unlearning all those things. I guess my suggestion would be two things. One, use a big brush and a palette knife because, um, because these kind of prevent you from being too particular, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, big brush, palette knife. That way, paint big shapes. Start with scenery that doesn't involve too many intricate things, just maybe a three-piece scenery, a river, some trees, and a foreground. So those are a few tips. Study some Russian Impressionists. Use a lot of color. You know, Russian Impressionists are afraid to, uh, to dip into pure color and, uh, and just put it right on the canvas, you know. Um, that's what it's all about. So I hope that, hope that helps you right there. And uh, I was going to take one more question, and we'll let you guys, you know, get back to your, your morning. And you suggest sketching in charcoal to practice. Yeah, you can do that, Eric, for sure. I mean, there's definitely a lot of famous painters who've done that. And if you feel comfortable doing that, I think that's a good way to go. I, I don't do it, but um, I try to just practice drawing with my brush because that way, you know, I guess it just keeps me loose and it keeps me fluid and it keeps me open to making changes. I mean, look at these shadows as, as like connected living organisms, you know, they're, they're connected. They're, everything's connected in the painting. And so I kind of like to look at things, you know, like that. Uh, but charcoal or sketching out that way, if you feel comfortable, there's nothing wrong with that at all. So, uh, you know, go for it. But uh, let's see if I missed anything. I want to catch everything. And I think that's I think that's about it for now. We could talk more next week and answer some more questions, get into some more tips and techniques. I'm going to respect your time. And uh, if you're watching on the replay, watch this other video. I'll put it up here above on it's called Masterclass Vibrant Oil Painting Colors 12 Tips. Put a lot of time, probably too much. It's probably it's probably too much information, actually, when I think back to that video. But that, that could be really helpful for you. And uh, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to join this community and you love plein air painting like I do and all the rest of these people on here, join up with us every week or two. I'll be back up in the mountains when my back heals up. and uh, But I'll be back here for sure Friday on the patio. And uh, God bless you guys. Have a blessed weekend. And uh, keep painting. Have some fun, man. All right. Take care. Thanks for joining me. Adios.